Good afternoon. My name is Tom Roby and I want to welcome you to what I hope is only the first of many opportunities for us to gather in the name of our most important common cause, that being the need to ensure our voices are heard loud and clear, calling out for a change in the force-fed status quo of the diagnosis and treatment of Lyme disease in America. The status quo, established and defended tooth and nail by the Infectious Diseases Society of America and those that support their view is the single basic element that needs to be overturned so that we may begin to put an end to this cycle of Lyme crime and the endless stream of victims it takes advantage of. So here we stand gathered at this grand theater, the Senator, the current home of the great documentary Under Our Skin, which so eloquently and beautifully speaks to our struggle. To have it here in Baltimore is admittedly the realization of an important personal goal for myself, but the chance to share the movie and its message with as many people as possible is the true motivation behind it all. In 2007, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reported over 27,000 cases of Lyme disease. But as they note on their website, the actual number is most likely 10 times higher. This is due to the complicated, labor-intensive reporting system that uses an expensive and unreliable two-tiered blood testing protocol. Just how unreliable is this system? A 2005 Johns Hopkins University study stated that this testing method could be missing as many as 75% of positive Lyme cases. An appalling figure when you consider the test for AIDS only misses five percent. In addition to a positive blood test, you must meet other criteria to be reported as a case of Lyme. A doctor must observe an erythema migrans rash. You must live in a known endemic area with at least two previous reported cases of Lyme disease. You must have been exposed to a habitat with ticks, a woody, brushy, or grassy area. And of course, you must be symptomatic in some way. I hope you all got that because there's gonna be a test when you leave. <laughs> so the CDC has their case definition, how Lyme disease should be reported, but they clearly state in their definition, it is not intended to be used in clinical diagnosis. They know a person could have Lyme and not meet the reporting requirements. The unfortunate thing for many of us some doctors forget to read that part, and unless you meet all the criteria, they will not consider that you have Lyme, making a quick diagnosis nearly an impossibility. Hello, my name is Laurie, and this is my story. I was in the prime of my life back in 2005. I had a four-year-old daughter and a new baby girl. Unfortunately, I got sick that year. My baby girl only knows me as sick. I was tired, really tired. I was non-functioning tired. My doctors talked it up to the fact that I just had a baby, my thyroid, and my Crohn's disease, but there was more. I would go to, to bed at night with horrific spine pain. It was so horrible that I would cry myself to sleep. There was joint pain in my hands and my knees, and all these symptoms my doctor said was my Crohn's, but I knew there was more. Still, I was sent to a rheumatologist, a pain specialist. I was given steroid injections, and the pain got worse. I walked around with pain-numbing patches everywhere. One day I woke up with numbness in my groin area. I thought I was having a reaction to the pain patches. So I called the drug company and took them off. The drug company indicated that they had no record of this ever happening. My GI doctor and neurologist felt that an inflamed test intestine was pushing on my bladder, causing numbness by pushing on a nerve. I was given IV immunosuppressive medication. I began to have numbness everywhere. So I was sent to a neurologist and I soon developed horrible, burning, stabbing nerve pain, but I had no answers. So I went to another neurologist, and another neurologist, and another neurologist, searching for an answer. I was soon sent to a neurosurgeon for a nerve biopsy. 
After receiving a positive anti-cardiolipin antibody test, I was sent to the lupus center at an area hospital. The doctors were now taking a new turn. I was told that once you have an autoimmune disease like Crohn's, you are more inclined to get another one. I was put on several immunosuppressive medications and nothing worked. I was given medication to help with the nerve pain, but I continued to get worse. This year, the neuro neurological problems became so severe that I had agonizing neuropathy, lightheadedness, brain fog, dizziness, confusion, ringing in my ears, and horrible disabling headaches that just never went away. My GI doctor said in all his years, he has never seen a, per a, a Crohn's patient have such profound neurological problems. He felt it was something else. So back I went to the neurologist and even a rheumatologist neurologist. They treated me for migraines, but they never went away. One day I happened to be watching a TV show. It was about a girl who had Lyme disease. Listening to her story, I thought, oh my gosh, that's me. So I did some additional research and I had all the symptoms of Lyme. I said something to the doctor at the lupus center and the rheumatologist neurologist and they said, you don't have Lyme, you have an autoimmune disease. It's impossible. Luckily, I can be thankful that I have a primary care doctor with an open mind. I know he saved my life. He happened to be doing blood work for me and I asked him if he could add Lyme to the test. He said, sure. We talked more and he decided to do a spinal tap. And I tested positive for Lyme in both my blood and spinal fluid. So here I am today with my center accessory. And I'm happy to say that the IV antibiotics have given me my life back. I'm finally having relief from the joint pain, headaches, dizziness, brain fog, lightheadedness, ringing in my ears, and heart palpitations. It has been a long, hard journey, and I'm finally getting there. It seems ironic that I can recall a day back before I became ill when I was walking my baby through a grassy area. I remember it was a weird day. I saw a pack of deer approach me. Most deer run away, but these didn't. There were about 10, and they walked right in front of me. I was only an arm's length away. I wonder, was this the faithful day that I was bitten? Was this the day that changed my life forever? I guess if there's a lesson learned here, is that the deer aren't going away. Lyme disease isn't going away either. You need to protect yourself against ticks, and you need to educate yourself about the symptoms of Lyme. There are a lot of kind and caring doctors around, but Lyme often does not come to their mind when making a diagnosis based on certain symptoms you have. My late name is Laurie, and that is my story. I hope it will never be yours.